I uh, grew up with individuals that are very kind and loving, but really didn't know anything about money. I had no experience in media. It wasn't a real thing for me. Like I didn't look at this like this was gonna be my career. Yeah, because some people say like, oh, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not my thing. But mm -hmm. what, they're, what they're basically saying to you is that I don't see myself don't that see way. It. Knowing who you are as a person, like I know that I'm highly competitive. We probably share that. Mm -hmm. I know that my need for dominance is high. I wanna be put in situations where I can compete and get significance for competing. Yeah. Welcome back. Another episode of Wealthy Creator. I'm your host, Justin Berry, and I have the pleasure with me today, what I'm considering a good friend now. We've been yeah. working together for about a year, been consulting on his social media. He was part of the original OGs of Content Empire, which is now Wealthy Creator, um, and we're still going strong. Uh, have with me Aaron Novello. Yeah, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? It's awesome to have this conversation with you in person because yeah. we speak on a regular basis, you know, <laughs> like bi-weekly and now just to do this in person is great. Oh man, it's awesome. I'm so glad you was able to make it. We've been planning on this for about, you know, six, seven months yeah. now trying to get you in and um, it's good. You know, it's WealthCon week this week. So you get to see some of the inner workings of everything and the prep for that. Um, so that's exciting. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you're able to come out yeah, truly. For sure. So Aaron, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump straight into this thing, man. I want to know, you know, you, you've I know you as a great businessman, but I want you to tell a little bit of your story so that people can begin to understand who Aaron is, the person, the businessman, the business owner, yeah, the, the individual. Tell me more about yourself. Yeah, so I uh, grew up with individuals that are very kind and loving, but really didn't know anything about money. And I watched what that environment can do, Yeah, right, with lack of resources and yeah. the things that go along with that. And I had a couple experiences in my life where I just made this internal decision. And I don't know if this has been true for you in your life where you're like, hey, this is unacceptable to me. Mm. And I don't know what, what the way is, but I'm going to either find the way or make the way. And that led me to uh, bumping into real estate. And okay. what was really interesting is that when I would do those personality profile tests, I'd always try to will them to come back like surgeon. <laughs> because I would look at the list and be like, who makes the most money? Yeah. And they would always come back salesperson. And I would always try to push it away and be like, no, no, like that's not what I want to do. Yeah. And uh, I was actually at a talk. I, I went to school at the University of Florida, and there was a, a gentleman there who owned the largest gym mm. in Gainesville. So he was a very wealthy individual. He had his own helicopter and, you know, all the accoutrements of success. Yeah. And he was talking about a book called Think and Grow Rich, which – you know, I'm sure a lot of people have read and the audience has read, and yeah. that was my first exposure to it. And what was true is that there was also this woman who was very attractive, who was an agent. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about like being an agent. So I was like, you know, I'm in college. I'm like, hey, maybe that's what I should be doing is uh, <laughs> like becoming an agent. And that just vibed directly with those personality profile tests. Wow. And then I just happened to, have, you know, do, you know, well at it. And yeah. At the beginning, though, it wasn't like that. I made $13,000 my first calendar year. <laughs> so not something people would put you on, you know, the Wealthy Creator Podcast to teach <laughs> yeah. you how to do that. It's definitely not something people would pay you to coach him to teach you how to do that. I just had an inaccurate assessment of reality. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand, like, what the game was and how to, what I should be focusing my time on. Mm -hmm. And once I got an accurate assessment, uh, you know, it's kind of off to the races. And in 2007, though, I was on track to do about 60 transactions, but my mom had a brain bleed. And in a very short period of time, she was young, she was like 27, I shut down my business uh, immediately within a week, gave away all the listings, all the pendings, and I moved back home. Mm. And I started over from scratch. And what was really, uh, I would prefer that that didn't happen to my mom, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it gave me this internal kind of knowing, which was I, I had a particular skill set on how to list and sell property in high volume. And that gave me experientially a knowing I can do this anywhere if you just drop me anywhere. Yeah. So, yeah, and then, you know, uh, in that new place, it took me first year did 17, then 50, then 85, then 89, then 100. Did 100 a year for 10 years in a row, 200 deals a year twice. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just crushed it after that. Yeah, huh? yeah. yeah. And, and it was really, uh, I think at first, it was like selfish because it was about like showing people like I'm the man or I'm really good at this. <laughs> yeah. And what it evolved into though, because I saw what it could do for others. So 
when my mom had that brain bleed, I was able to buy her condo and pay cash when I was 27 years old. Wow. Uh, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, this isn't about like flexing. This is about I can use this skill or ability to be able to serve yeah. other people and help them. Yeah. So glad you said that because, I mean, you know, our mission here, even in the Bonita Company and the wealthy world, um, you know, it, it is to serve people, right? Yeah. Like, that's what we want to do. We want to enrich communities. You want to serve people. Yeah. And so hearing hearing your testimony about how you're doing that is amazing. I, and I 1,000 percent relate. One thing you said early before we even get into, you know, yeah. the the real story. But I wanna I wanna get into what you talked about, your personality test. Yeah. So we use what's called the predictive index sure. for everybody that comes through here, yeah. right? And actually when I when I first started here and they had me take it. It was like my first time actually taking it. I took it at like eleven thirty at night, <laughs> real quick. Like, yeah, 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 I didn't care anything yeah. about what was going to happen because I, I kind of, you know, it's funny. In my mind, I was like, I know who I am. Yeah, I know like, what I'm capable of. Like, I'm about to just tell the truth on this thing and keep it moving. I didn't overthink it at all, and I came back a persuader. Really? Yeah, and so it's funny because I think that that person. I think I came back that way specifically because of my history, one in sports. But I've always been like the captain and the leader and the mm. individual that was kind of like influencing my team. And so I think as a persuader, you know, especially, you know, high school, college, you have to do that. All right. Like it's no question. High school, everybody's in there playing around. You have to be the one that kind of not only leads by example, but is able to talk on a level that anybody can understand to get them to do what we're trying to accomplish here. Now, our team was like fourth in the state for two years straight, right? And, and, and we battled with all of the top teams. So I've, I found that to be like mission accomplished for me as I was ending. I yeah. was like, all right, I've lost a total of maybe, I think it was 11 games all four years. Yeah. All right. So I did pretty good. Then when I got to college, I was like, oh, I'm starting all over again. Mm. All right. And even still, it was like, all right, how can I, you know, get – implemented in this new system mm -hmm. and this, around these new teammates. Some of them are fifth-year seniors, so now you're an 18-year-old kid with grown men, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. You're trying to figure out how to, you know, really kind of make yourself a presence in a locker room that already is established. Mm -hmm. And one way of doing that was, you know, selling yourself to everybody yeah. else, letting them know who you are sure. and what you have to offer. Yeah. And so it's funny, like, you, you talked about that, like, you know, you were trying to think, what can I come back as? And you know what that made me do when I came back as a persuader? It made me go check and see what everybody else was. Oh, really? Yeah, because I'm like, all right, Ryan Pineda is successful, all right? And I, at the time, I didn't know him, really. I just knew, like, I mean, I, I knew about the opportunity. I didn't know him. I'm like, let me check and see what he came back as because if I'm anywhere near that, okay, I know. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. just follow the footsteps, right? Yeah. Like, And then I, I start checking everybody else, like, that was in leadership roles, around the company and I'm like, okay, what what are they? Like what where did they fall on this predictive index? And then I'm like, how true is this thing anyway? So then I actually read it. And you know, it's so spot on. Accurate. Uh, so accurate. Like it's unreal how accurate this mm -hmm. thing is. Um and so but yeah, I, I say all I have to say, like you're you're one thousand percent right about going and being like, okay, I don't I need to make sure I come back as you know, a certain thing. But it does help not only it helped me with the confidence to be able to to kind of step out and, and be a leader in, in positions that I never, like I, I had no experience in media, right? Sure. Like it, it wasn't it wasn't a real thing for me. Like I didn't look at this like this was gonna be my career. Yeah. When I was playing ball and when I was doing other things, like that wasn't in, in the plan. I just had fun doing it on the side, kind of a side hustle if I could make some money. And so I go. I'm saying all that to say like you're like I can totally relate to how you were like all right. How do all right? What am I coming back as? It didn't fit what you thought of yourself. Yeah, and I think what's true is that you can only behave in accordance with the way you see yourself. Yeah. That's like, and and what's interesting to me about that is, and that applies to social too, because some people say like, oh, I don't do that. Mm -hmm. That's not my thing. But mm -hmm. what, they're, what they're basically saying to you is that I don't see myself don't that see way. don't see it, yeah. And uh, so then it, it's like, okay, how do I work on self-image? Now, part of it is, is data. So mm -hmm. if you take like the predictive index and you know you're a persuader or a captain or a maverick, or you know whatever your profile is, that helps you to get clarity between the difference between the way I think I am right. or the way I actually am. Right. So I had a coaching client recently, and he's like, hey, man, I think that you see me different than I am. I said, that's quite possible. What's also possible, because people pay me to see what's true, mm -hmm. is that I see you the way you actually are, 
not the way you think you are. Yeah, yeah, not <laughs> you the way you saying? see yourself, right? <laughs> not the way yeah. you see yourself or the way you would like to be perceived. Yeah, yeah. So by, you know, uh, knowing who you are as a person, like I know that I'm highly competitive. We probably share that. Mm -hmm. I know that my need for dominance is high. I know that I want to be put in situations where I can compete and get significance for competing. Yeah, yeah. So if you know that about yourself, then you can position yourself in situations that uh, you can let your gift out. When what's also true is if I know, let's say I know you're a persuader, now as a leader, that helps me because now I know how to interact with you. Exactly. I know how to inspire you. I know how to um, kind of push buttons a little bit because you're competitive. Yeah. So I could be like, hey, bro, like, yeah. where you at? Right, and then you're like, right. what? And then you want, right? Yeah, then you going after it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, 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 it truly is like, and, and this is for anybody that's listening or watching who is operating a business and not using some type of personality test when they do their hiring, when they, like, even if you already have the established business, go back and make everybody take this test. Yeah. Not only does it help you hire, but also helps you with how you manage each individual. hundred percent. Right. Like Ryan knows that if he comes to me and goes, the numbers ain't really doing what they should be doing. That I'm up all night. Yeah, you're like, excuse me. Like he knows that, right? Like he doesn't. And, and for the most most of the time, you don't have to tell me because I'm seeing it too, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm trying to figure out what's why something isn't working. And so, but it, it is true. Like you you can implement those things in your business that that help you work while also using it to to operate in your own system. Exactly. And what I think is so awesome is that we were talking about this off camera. When if we go back to uh, you can only behave in accordance with the way you see yourself. What's what's so beautiful about this kind of journey that both of us have been on at the same time mm -hmm. where your tendency in the past was to be behind the scenes yeah. and somebody had to cast a vision, Ryan probably, mm -hmm. of, hey, you can do this. This is a role you can step into. Yeah. But at that time, you didn't see yourself that way. Yeah. And even now what's happening, we were talking like on our last call no. and you're like, bro, people are coming up to me and it's weird. Yeah. yeah. But what's happening is, is the new version the new way you see yourself is clashing with the old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I think with every evolution, I do believe that business is not a material journey. I think it's a spiritual one. Yeah. And our comfort keeps us from our calling. <laughs> so good. there's something that comes right up to it. Yeah. And it's like, yo, this is really uncomfortable for me. I don't, you know, I don't do the on, I, I, that's not who I am. Yeah, yeah. But as you step into that, uh, because you can only behave in accordance with the way you see yourself, as you start to see that more and more, then you behave as that individual. And then that just happens and it's normal for you and it's not it's a big natural. deal. Yeah, and, and I'm, you know, like you said, we're going through it now, yeah. right? Like it, it, was, it was one of those things where you have the opportunity to level up in a way. Yeah. Right, and you've been working for the level up, but you haven't been like clear on what that even means or what that like will bring to yes. you. Right, like you understand, yes, yeah, scaling my business is important. I'm gonna do everything I need to do to scale the business, right? Like you understand that. You get on social media, you're like, okay, I'm trying to drive leads. Yeah. I'm trying to grow influence. Yeah. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to grow my downline. I'm trying to, like, there's all these things that come with why you're, why you are putting out content. Mm -hmm. And then there's the moment of, oh no, they're seeing me differently now. Yeah. And now I'm, re I have a responsibility. Yes. And I almost owe it to them to give out what is due, right? Like to, to, under, to give them everything that I have. Because again, we're coming from, the place of I want to serve people. 100%. So it's, well, I was just, the reason I got all excited is I was having a conversation with a member of our team. She's part of our organization, Elite Builders at EXP. And I see her as like a commander. Mm -hmm. Like she can build and help a lot of people. And she, still, she told me a story three years ago while we were having dinner. And I said to her out loud, you need to tell that story more often. Yeah. But you know what her first response was? I'm not comfortable because I have shame about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, instead of having shame, you should be proud of what you've been through. And a lot of people would benefit from that. Yeah, yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think there's a difference between a plan, a strategy. So a plan is like, hey, I want to do this on social. Mm -hmm. I want to have 10K. I want to do whatever. A strategy is how am I going to do that, which you guys can help with. All right. More importantly, why? Mm -hmm. So what I'm aware of, the reason why we're here doing all this is because I know, I was telling my wife this the other day, is there a small part of me? that digs it when people recognize me. Sure, I'm human. You're right. Yeah, like yeah. The flesh is weak. Like, yeah. Of course I'm gonna be like, oh, that's kind of cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More importantly though, I know that as I get more attention, that helps other people grow. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So that's the driving force behind it. And I think a lot of people, it's just my experience, 
they're just doing content. They're copying other people in hopes that they can get something that they can get followers from. Yeah. And I think that's completely the wrong way to do it. Instead, I think if you're authentic about what you believe, you will pull people towards you, but you will also become polarizing. You will push people away that aren't into your Mm -hmm. vibe, Mm -hmm. right? So me and you were talking about, yeah, it's about serving people, helping people. There's a whole segment of the business community. It's like, that's lame, dude. This is about making money. It's bottom line, it's profit. So those aren't our people. (laughs) Right. And that's cool. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. No, 1000%, like you don't, I'm not here to be a people pleaser. Like that's not, that's not why I'm doing this, right? Like that's not why I have taken the opportunity to step in front of the camera and speak about what I know. That's not why, right? Like when you talk about serving, you do it without the expectation of what the return is. Mm-hmm. I really want to see you win, right? Like I'm, I'm willing to spend hours of yes. my week with you because I really want to see yeah. where this goes yeah. and how far you can take it. Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's one of those things, right? Like, I don't believe that, like, that the ego boost that you get from someone knowing you is more valuable than what you offer in that moment. And here's what I mean by that. I have found myself, after realizing that people are recognizing me for what I've done and been able to do with Ryan, people are recognizing me, but I need to be ready to give them something to take away. Yeah. Right? The 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 hi yeah it's me hi yeah. like that's not giving no anymore it's right? not even, like, that's not an exchange of value and so now my focus now is on okay when that individual asks me something will I have a real answer for them something tactical that they can apply right away right and I'm constantly thinking that okay I can see people sometimes standing off to the side it's me and Ryan standing there we were at an event last weekend. They're standing there, and I know they're trying to get to Ryan. Yeah. Right? And you almost want to say, just come on. Just come right? on. Like, yeah. Just come on. Let's get it done. Right? But you wait for them to take their opportunity. Sometimes they take it. Sometimes they don't. All right? And I'm like, oh, you missed out because that was the moment for you. Right? Mm-hmm. You're probably never going to get him by himself and steal again. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, take the moment. And then the the videographer comes up to me. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, I recognize you from da da da. I'm like, yeah, cool. And as I'm talking, I'm like, he's not coming because of just my nice video, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's, he sees value. And so what can I, what value can I give in order like for him to walk away with feeling like, yeah, yeah. they're the real, like he's real. Like he's not just yeah. one of these guys up here talking and being an imposter. He's actually trying to help people. And so I think for anybody that is in having that experience, right? Cause I tell everybody, everybody's an influencer. Yeah. No matter where you're at, you're sure. an influencer, right? Like somehow you influence your home your family, your friends, like you have some type of influence. Are you really giving them value though? Are you making yourself more valuable by giving out the value? Yeah. Right. And so it's like those moments I'm like, yeah, make sure Justin, you actually have something to say. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's cool. Like, yeah, it's me. It's not okay. It's just not enough for me. It's not. You know what I mean? And so I'm finding myself there over and over again. Okay. What information can I share with them that will help them take whatever they're doing to the next level? Yeah. And what is true for me, as I hear you say that, that means like you are, uh, you're equipped to be a leader Mm. because you're thinking to yourself instead of the value of this is the boost of ego. It's mm-hmm. not like, uh, yeah, if you recognize me, that's cool, but I want to be able to exchange value with you. Like I believe, I was telling my wife this the other day, you know, before I go on stage or before I do a talk, it's more like, hey, listen, like, thank you mm-hmm. for this opportunity. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for the ability to be able to uh, share something that could be positive or mm-hmm. helpful in some way. So give me the strength, give me the emotional intelligence, give me the intellectual intelligence, give me the recall, give me yeah. the sense of humor, Yeah, yeah. give me the enthusiasm <laughs> to be able to pour out so I can help somebody in a positive way yeah. and reminding myself, it's not me, it comes through me. Right. And this isn't for me, it is for, for the, you, yeah. right? And it's yeah. for them and like, I'm in. And then yeah. you go do your thing. And I think if you do that, it creates like a shield, yep. a protective shield mm-hmm. Where it's so easy for that to go straight to your head, yeah, and you know, uh, start to make it about you. Yeah, yeah. You have to know that it's not it's not you, right? Like if you're truly walking in a calling, it's not you no. that's even doing it, right? Like the what you're saying isn't coming from you, no. right? Like you're doing everything to exercise the muscle, but it's 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 a calling. Yeah. So so you know you have to be aware of that and, and, and know that, and I'm aware, man. Like I, I tell you. Like, I don't take anything that I've experienced in the last six months, seven months for granted. Yeah. Because I understand that this is the beginning. Yes. 
and I know where things can go, yeah. right? Like I, I've, I've actually been a part of so many different situations that have seen growth and individual grow now that I'm like, okay, Justin, if this is something that he's calling you to, you got to do everything you can to be prepared for it. Yeah. And that's just where it's at. But enough about me. Yeah. Let's talk about Aaron. <laughs> yeah. You said you did a 13K year. Yes. And then 100 plus transactions. Yeah, five years later. Five years later. Yeah. Tell me what contributed to that type of growth yep. in that short amount of time. So one was, uh, I read a, in retrospect, I didn't know this at the time, yeah. but there was a book uh, by Ray Dalio called Principles. And in that book, he says you need an accurate assessment of reality in order to produce a good outcome. Mm. Now, when he said that at the time, I'm like, hey, that's cute. <laughs> like, that's kind of clever. You know what I mean? But the more I marinated on that, the more I was like, wow, that's really true. Not the way I think it is or the way social tells me it is, but the way it actually is. Mm -hmm. And he also had this formula that a dream plus dealing with reality plus determination equals a successful life. That's good. What's interesting about that is if you ask yourself a question, which part of that formula is actually the most challenging? It's like, well, is it a dream? No, everybody's got a dream. Yeah, everybody's got a dream. Is it determination? Eh, people have various degrees of determination. It's the dealing with reality piece. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest because mm -hmm. then I have to admit to myself, I'm not as fast as I thought I was, as quick as I thought I was, as smart I thought as I was, as cool as I thought as I was. Yeah. And that for some people is so uncomfortable that they shut down, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the accurate assessment I, reality that I then acquired was, hey, the money's not in the service. The money's in the selling of the service. So like, that doesn't mean we don't give people good service. Right. That's expected. Like in real estate, they expect you to know how to read a contract. Yeah. They expect you to know what you're talking about. They expect you to know how to negotiate. What I tell people all the time is like, do you jump up and down when you walk into Whole Foods and they have groceries? <laughs> like, no, that's the expectation. Right, They're right. going to have groceries there. <laughs> yeah. You're not like, oh my God, guys, this is dope. You got groceries today. Yeah. Where the money's at though is learning how to sell the service. See, I spent that full year stacking my time on things that weren't actually the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't know what, what, the, what the thing was. So once I got that accurate assessment, I was like, oh, that's what's true. So then I got obsessed with learning how to sell the service. So I role played twice a day, six days a week for three years. I would hand write out scripts by hand, Wow! right? Because in, in real estate, the conversation, well, the, the people change, the situations change, the houses change. Mm -hmm. The conversation never changes. It's always the same. Mm -hmm. Like you know, my friend's an agent, will you cut your commission? Never heard of your company. Like it's yeah, over and over again. And in, in the real estate business, there's only opportunities. There's no security. Mm -hmm. And I'm very motivated by security, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Particularly coming from a family where they didn't have a lot of resources. So what I realized is like, if I get my skills to such a degree that if there is an opportunity, there's an 85% chance I'll be able to take advantage of that opportunity. I've just created security for myself and my family. Yeah. So hmm. I got maniacal around practice. I would, I would record myself doing presentations. <laughs> I would record role-playing, right? With, and and I, I sought out role-play partners that were doing like 200 transactions and I'm doing like a little, yeah. right? And ha pestered them and you know, bothered them to get into their schedules. Yeah, yeah. So that was the first accurate assessment of reality. The second accurate assessment of reality is that you can only grow to the proportion that your systems will allow you to. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care how much motivation you do. I don't care how much rah-rah you go to. I don't care how much you go to these, like, you know, all these speakers yeah. that'll even be at WealthCon and they're yeah. like motivating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, if you don't have systems in place, you will plateau. Yeah. You will not grow. <laughs> so with that recognition, uh, we started to build a team around being able to process deals. Mm -hmm. Because most agents, what happens is they might go to get good at the soft skill but they get capped out at like three to four transactions a month because they're doing everything behind the scenes. Gotcha. So we created systems really with the help of my wife because she's the operations manager. She's a specialist on the mm. profile. So okay. she's perfect for that. Okay. <laughs> uh, analytical by nature. Yeah. And that allowed me to just throw stuff over my shoulder. So all I focused on is what I call PLAN, prospect, lead, follow up, go on appointments, negotiate deals. So we became a conveyor belt mm -hmm. for listings where I could take 10, 15 listings personally per month, throw them over my shoulder, and, and keep, keep it moving. Going. Wow. Yeah. So those two accurate assessments are really what allowed us to get to that place. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's incredible that every time I hear a success story about how they scaled or how they improved their business, it always starts with developing a system. Yeah. And every time I hear about that, there's usually a woman behind it. Yeah. You know what's fascinating about that? I don't know if you know this, but Mr. Wonderful, mm -hmm. 
He said he only invests on Shark Tank with women. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you know why he said why? Why? One is they're better allocators of resources. Okay. And two, they have smaller egos. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was like, wow, dude, yeah, that's pretty insightful. Because like, <laughs> yeah, that's spot on. Yeah. And what's true about that, Justin, I, I find that so fascinating that you notice that all of my team is women. Yeah. They're all like my, the onboarding specialist is a woman, like Carla, like all the team that does the behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'm seeing it over and over again. I mean, I'm seeing it in our own, in our own system, right? Like in our own company where a lot of the men that you see, yeah, there might be some faces that you might recognize and they may be up speaking and they may be doing and, you know, but a lot of the, the really gritty work that needs to get done as like time consuming, but also it has to be time efficient. Yeah. They're they're there. The women yeah. are there, and they're, and they're just really good at it. I always tell my wife, like, you know, you're smarter than me in yeah. every way. Like, I can't, I don't have an argument for what you're saying. No, right? and I think that they're they have the capacity. I think by nature, men are very singularly focused, mm -hmm. and women have the capacity to have their intention and uh, our attention or awareness in multiple places at one time. Yep. So they could be like, you know, talking to the kids, cooking something, yep. like watching what's on TV, <laughs> talking to you, like all at the same time. Where we're like. <laughs> Nah, dude, I need like one thing. No, 1,000%, 1,000%. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, how important has, you know, creating the content been to the growth of the business? Yeah, so I heard something recently that was very true for me was that if you are not good at marketing, you have to become a world-class salesperson. <laughs> so that's what I did because I had a uh, kind of like a, a mentor in my life that had a lot of influence over thinking. And he was saying that that's stupid and dumb and you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. That you should just focus on beating the bushes, you know, pounding, dialing, smile mm -hmm. dial, make a pile, that sort of thing. And I didn't focus on brand building. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until recently, like as I made this transition, I used to own part of a KW office. I sold it back in order to participate with EXP. Okay. And I recognized about a year ago, right before we got involved, patterns. Mm -hmm. So patterns... And like Tony Robbins says, like, if you want to create outcomes that are favorable, it's based on the quality of your choices. Mm -hmm. But how many people actually work at being a good decision maker? Like nobody. Right. We naturally think we're great yeah, at making decisions. <laughs> yeah. But if you look at people's outcomes, they're not. And part of decision making is pattern recognition. So it's recognizing patterns, but then using the patterns. Using, yep. So one of the patterns that I was watching, I'm watching all of these individuals use media because I don't believe it's social anymore. Mm -hmm. They say that, mm -hmm. but they're all doing it wrong because they're all taking pictures of themselves cooking right. or eating or on vacation. And what they don't realize is that the saturation of content on platforms mm -hmm. is at like an all-time high. So more content has, will be put on Instagram today than in human history. Right. And tomorrow will be the same. Right. So when that happens, then from a supply and demand perspective, what becomes more valuable and more sought after is quality of what's being said, mm -hmm. not pictures of your food <laughs> at your mom's house eating dinner, and also production quality. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching these patterns, and I'm watching the uh, Paul brothers okay. use attention to create prime and become a billionaire. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute. I'm watching the Kardashians use attention to create skims and become billionaires. I'm watching Mr. Beast use attention now you know what he said on an interview recently? They're like, why'd you, why'd you choose chocolate? He's like, there were two companies. They're both 100 years old. It's just kind of easy. And then you know what he said? It's really easy. I just put it on the shelves and people buy it. That's it, yeah. Because he has what I don't think people realize is that what media is is distribution. Yeah. So if you ask a question like, what's more difficult, creating a product or distributing it? All right. It's distribution. distribution. Yeah. So when I noticed this pattern, I said to my team, because if we want to, I told Carter, like, what we're really doing is like a ministry. The more people that we can bring into it, the more we can love on them and help them. Yep. And the vision is to grow to thousands of agents. Like, we've grown to 194 in 16 months. Wow. Um, but the vision is to grow to thousands. And I, was, I said to Carl, I'm like, I don't really understand this. I see the pattern. I see the tsunami, the wave. Right, right, right. But I don't really know. Why I don't know what the platforms are for. Yeah. I don't know how to use them. And before this, it was pictures of my wife posting pictures of our kids. Mm -hmm. Like, I really didn't know. So then I asked Jose, who's my business partner, mm -hmm. and he's in the Collective Genius. Okay. And I said to Jose, hey, bro, who does social media the best? Who makes the most money? And he was like, yeah, there's a couple guys that have courses. Nobody makes more money than Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Like, nobody. <laughs> Period. End of story, hands down. So that was like, okay, that's who I need to get proximity to. Yeah. And that's what made me reach out to you guys and then learn... Uh, we also brought 
like a media team, the ones who do the editing and posting for us, mm -hmm. where they could be on calls with us. Mm -hmm. So we're just like, if our bodies are the hardware, our brains are the software. So we're just sucking out the yeah, software. Man. Yeah, You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shoo, like show us how to do this. Yeah. And very quickly, um, what's been happening now is that with attention, money and power follow attention, and then attention follows money and power. Oh, yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a virtuous loop. Like Grant Cardone is the one who said that, and it's totally accurate. So now what I see is this is a land grab because the barrier to entry now, like we're here at your guys' facility and this is dope. Yeah. I asked you the other, I'm like, yo, how much did the room cost to set up? You're like a hundred grand. Mm -hmm. How much is this caught up, right? So the barrier to entry for like small business owners now, I think is two to $3,000 a month. Yeah. Like editing, posting, if you're serious. Yeah. Because if you don't want to post stuff that just like your family members watch, right. you need help. Yeah. So, that's the barrier. I believe in the next three to five years, it'll be 10,000 a month mm -hmm. because that supply and demand, it'll just keep getting higher, better quality, better quality production, right? Yeah, and, and if, you, if you're trying to compete with us, right. you're gonna spend 50K a month. You know what's funny is I was at a, <laughs> I, was, I did an event uh, for our uh, a local event, we do socials. Yep. And there's a guy who owns a title company and he was talking to me about like media and he sees what I'm doing or whatever. And I was like, bro, you post like once a day. You can't yeah. keep up with me, dude. Yeah, I'm no. like three or four times a day on all channels. Yeah, it just like it's, it's not even close. If you're not making any money, well, you probably can't invest with me anyway. Most realtors aren't very good real estate investors. No. They're just good salespeople. Dude, you're broke, okay? Yeah. You don't need a, a rental property. Yeah. Trust me. 